Greetings to all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. It is always a blessing to remember the greatest sacrifice and the greatest love God has done for us and given to us. If, if it had not taken place, we would be here this morning and this afternoon and around the world. As we read the first verse or first saying of Jesus Christ on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All the previous times during his course of life on the earth, he said to others, I forgive you, I forgive us. Jesus himself, in his divinity, he forgave them. But upon the cross, he is calling upon the Father, God, to forgive others. Because he was bearing our sins as a human being. In your place and in my place, he has been tormented. He has been shedding blood, and he has, was dying there. So he's asking the Father who sent him to this earth to accomplish the responsibility and share the love of God. He's calling upon God to forgive them, the authority. And God sent Jesus Christ out of his magnificent love to this world. And Jesus Christ gave himself as the love to this world. And love has the nature of forgiveness. Love covers the multitude of sins. And when God forgives somebody's sin, he casts it in the deepest part of the ocean. And also, just like east from the west, because they have never meet. And also he put it behind him. He never go and dig it out. And this is what God has taught us. And those who witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus saw his hours of agony. And they heard him cry out in a loud voice, it is finished. But it's finished. You will hear it later. He paid the price for our sins that we might be forgiven and have eternal life <coughs> by faith through him. Only request was have faith in him and acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Savior who died for our sins. Old Testament law we read Tooth for tooth, eye for eye. That's tit for tat. If somebody is doing something against you, hurt you, you go back and do it. But it comes to Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the law and said, Love your enemies. Love has long suffering. The patience is there. Jesus put his teaching into practice over here. He did not just teach and go but he put it into practice. That is the God's blessings to us. And also, he taught his disciples how to practice it in their life. Only thing Jesus' disciples asked Jesus was teach us to pray. In the prayer, Jesus taught, forgive our debts, ask we forgive our debtors. That is conditional. And also we heard in when we were reading the first part, this responsibility, uh, 632, I think. Yes. How many times? Seven times? Seventy. Or seventy times? Seven. It's, it never ends. And also, it keeps on saying, 
If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive our trespasses, our sins. So here it is conditional. God has forgiven us to forgive others. When we forgive others, we are forgiven. We enjoy the freedom. No more live in guilty. That is New Testament for Christ has accomplished for us and teaching us and to practice. It is very, very hard. It is very hard. This morning, by 4 o'clock, something came to my mind about somebody did something wrong. Not about uh, somebody, but I know. Then I got up and I asked God, God, I, did, I have forgotten and I have forgiven that. But today I have to speak on forgiveness. Forgiving. Let me get out of that bindings at all. And in Stephen, the first martyr, he practiced it when he was stoned to death. And he said, <coughs> he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, don't hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. What a marvelous teaching which we all have to practice. And when I go back to Old Testament, there's a character who typifies Jesus Christ, Joseph. Genesis chapter 45, when I was reading and studying that chapter, it touched me. Seven things Joseph did. I leave it with you to go and read and meditate. Seven things. Once we forgive someone, we do not want it to want others to know what he or she has done. When his brothers came to him, he asked all his servants to get out of the room. He wept loudly. And he did not say, hey, these are my brothers who sold me, made me to go as a, as a servant, who made me to go into the prison. He did not say any of those things, or who put me in the pit. But God elevated him from the pit, from the prison to the palace. He gave glory to God. And once forgive, secondly, once forgive, we are filled with compassion and love for the offender. Second verse in 45. Once we forgive someone wholeheartedly, we will no more want him or her remain guilty and condemned. But we will do all to erase that guilty feelings from him or her so that he or she will be able to forgive himself or herself. And the fourth thing, once we forgive someone, we want that person to be closer to us, not far away from us. For example, Joseph asked the whole family, his own brothers and father, to come to that land, and he gave the best to them, and providing all their needs. He did not say a single word, and he said, this all happened because of the tree God has given me. I never left that tree. He stuck with that. And the fifth thing, forgiveness brings new life. Everybody rejoice and happy there. And the sixth, forgiveness makes us God conscious. And he was giving glory to God and bringing them into the relationship with God. When we pardon somebody who offended us, they will see God's forgiveness and love in us, and they will be drawn to God, our Father, who has forgiven our sins. And seventh thing, when we forgive someone as Christ forgive us, we will give the very best possible way, everything. And Joseph knew what would happen if he leave them in the land where is famine. So brought them over here. I have stored everything for you. Be closer to me, 
I forgive you everything. He didn't say even forgive us or anything. He didn't even mention or remind them, but gave them the best. Jesus, forgive us so that we may live forgiven life, forgiving others. Forgiveness is from God. And we have to forgive others. When we forgive others, we will live a forgiven life. Jesus died that we may live. He died for us to forgive our sins. When we accept him as a special savior and as part, he is able to forgive all our sins and to cleanse us and to lead us into a new life. May God bless you with these words and let us practice what Christ has taught us.